Hi everyone, this is Kelly from The Truth and Story, and I am so excited to be doing this walkthrough for you and for me. Because while I did shuffle these in uh, a uh, daily video, I have not looked through all these, and so I'm so excited. Uh, so this is the backing that I chose. Well, first of all, this is the Arthur Rackham Oracle. Now. Arthur Rackham is a illustrator, uh, was an illustrator from 18, he was born in 1867 and he died in 1939. Um, he did a lot of work for newspapers and magazines. He also illustrated 42 books including uh, the cards that this deck um, use are from Four of his volumes, two volumes of Grimm's Fairy Tales. How amazing is that? I am a huge Grimm's Fairy Tales. I have them, multiple copies of them. I read them to my children. I read them growing up. I'm a huge Grimm Fairy Tale person. Um, it also came from Shakespeare's Midsummer's Night's Dream. And then another one that says, and I was going to look it up. Ibsen's Pier Giant, G-Y-N-T, or Gint. Uh, I don't know that particular book. The other ones I do. Um, and so he's an illustrator. And I'm so excited to see this. Um, Duck Soup is the label, which isn't even on here, is it? Let's see. Duck Soup Productions is the uh, production company. I'll put a link to this uh, deck in the description box below. Um, I have seen um, Arthur Rackham's illustrations before in books, um, but uh, sometime last year a tarot deck came out of Wagner's Ring Cycle, which Arthur Rackham did the illustrations for. And I really wasn't happy with the tarot deck, or not ha not happy with it, but uh, I didn't think that it, it needed to be a tarot deck. I think it thought it needed to be a, an oracle deck. But I did pick up this wonderful... Um, playing card deck that is absolutely stunning. I have read with it a couple times as an oracle deck because of the way uh, this is done and the way this, uh, um, just the images as well as even the story uh, cycle of this, the ring cycle, Wagner's wing, ring cycle. And I have a video talking about this a little bit more. Um, these are the backings. Um, but not too long after I got in this, and I was kind of like, no, I'm going to let the ring cycle tarot go by. Uh, it just well, didn't interest me. Um, I saw this Rackham, Arthur Rackham's Oracle. And so this t does exactly what I wanted, which is using um, Arthur Rackham's uh, illustrations. And it's even better to me that it comes from, many of them come from the, his um, Grimm's Fairy Tales or Shakespeare's Midsummer's Night Dream. I mean, that is just perfect to me. And so I was so excited about it. It's a little bit of a pricier deck. Um, you're able to pick your own backing, and this is the backing that I picked. There's another one with tree branches on it that a lot of people I've seen have chosen for this, which works beautifully, especially for the front of this deck. Um, I just wanted something a little bit different, and I just really fell in love with this uh, starry background uh, backing. So this is the backing that I picked. Um, and so it's a little bit of a pricier deck, so I was kind of waiting uh, till the end of the year. And uh, so um, nobody here had put, talked about it in her 2015 decks and said it had a six to seven uh, ranking of shadow, and that sold me. And I had it up in my box, or my I had tab for it open. And then Quilpin said she bought it, and I literally turned around and just bought it because it was... Yeah, so this is my first deck purchase for 2016, and I'm so, so, so psyched about it. Um, there is no guidebook that comes with it. You get this card about Arthur Rackham, um, and then you get this uh, card right here uh, that explains... I'm going to read this real quick. Since this is the entirety of the guidebook, we can do that. The Arthur Rackham Oracle is an open-ended divination system not derived from the Tarot or Lenormand, but utilizing elements of both. We encourage its users to devise their own patterns, spreads, and rituals of use. The querent is to be given the deck to shuffle whilst considering the question or problem upon which they seek guidance. When the querent is satisfied as to the shuffle, the cards are to be returned to the reader who lays them out in a pattern or spread of their own 
creation or choosing. Many popular spreads used with other divination decks are applicable to this one and proceeds to interpret each card in relation to its position within the spread and its connection to the querent, her question, or problem. Keywords are intended as a guide. Reverse meanings are permitted with the exception of the sideways cards. Some of the artwork is sideways, such as this one. So the artwork is sideways, not that way. So it's horizontal, not vertical. With the exceptions of the sideways cards, which always cross the preceding card and must be read as upright. Um, as with the system of Madame Lenormand, the cards should be read in relation to each other. Depending upon the amount of detail, desired readings can consist of a single card all the way up to 15 or 20. More than that, and the reading is likely to become confused. So, I mean, it says at the top, you know, do whatever you want, but then it was kind of very specific about how it should be shuffled and cut, and don't you dare read the sideways ones reversed. <laughs> so I did get a little bit of a kick out of that, but basically do them as you want, and it's kind of a combination of Lenormandy, uh, Oracle-y, tarot-y-ness, which I love that kind of stuff. So... That's the, the entire scope of the guidebook. Now, I have a couple things spread out because I just want to touch on them. We do have a male and female significator for this deck, which I think is wonderful. This would be great for doing nine card spreads the way I do Lenormand, maybe shuffling them all in, looking for the um, significator, and then doing the four cards before and after. So I really love that these are included. That makes my heart quite happy. Um, so those we have those significators. So I'm going to stick those over there for right now. Um, and then we have the cards themselves. Oh, well, let's see. Let's just use these for a minute because here's two. Most of the cards are upright vertical as a standard card. Um, you can see they have this uh, sort of, yes, there are borders. No, I will not be trimming this deck. Uh, this I'm just taking as fairy tale story illustrations where there's these neat little things here, neat little things here. So I'm these are, these are going to remain intact and I'm going to blacken the edges. Um, uh, it has the title and then it has sort of some keywords or descriptors below that. Some of them, um, not as many of them, are, uh, as I said, horizontal where we have the image this way. Uh, this stays, the rest of the card stays the same except for uh, that that turns up like that and we have, but everything else is the same. Now, this is a deck for story lovers, I believe, and for lovers of the word, <laughs> just the wonders of the word. There are amazing words uh, here and meanings of the words uh, that are just stunning and chewy and delicious, and I'm so excited uh, about them. There were three words. Uh, some people talk about... Um, I've heard said, you know, some people are like, well, you know, it's, there's words in there that they're just too difficult or, you know, shouldn't be in there. They're just trying to be more difficult than they need to be. Um, and I think that that's too bad because, get, you know, just use a dictionary. There's, you, you learn new words. Um, I did know Aflatus, um, I'm probably pronouncing it incorrectly. Uh, this is your divine calling, uh, but I had wanted to show you that one this way. But I did have to look up these uh, three words here here. Um, and I love that. I love having to look words up and I have no problems with that whatsoever. Now I'm going to leave this one for last because I'm still not entirely sure about that one. Oh no. Yeah, no, that one. I understand what it means. I'm not entirely sure how it applies. Uh, but this one we have here is Sangfreud. Um, and this is having composure in danger. So the, this is confronting the demons. So uh, this person is confronting the demons and needing to maintain your composure when you do so. So you're going to be facing a difficult situation and you need to maintain your composure. Um, so that's wonderful. And now I have a new word and I love that. Um, I'm just going to flip that over as if we looked at it because we did. 
Um, here we have ma madrugada. This is a Portuguese word. I had a little difficulty finding this because bands and stuff like that kept coming up. Um, but this actually means the period between midnight and sunrise. So this is says doorway to dream time. And so that's beautiful. Uh, that liminal space It's also the doorway to fairy. You know, when you fall asleep under trees and things like that, that opens you to the fairy. Um, but that is madrugada. Madrugada. Again, it's Portuguese, so I'm probably slaughtering how it's pronounced, but it is that period between midnight and sunrise. So there I learned something new. And then this one was Baphomet. Baphomet. I feel like I've heard this before as a demon's name, but that's not the how you know I was able to find anything out. It talked about uh, an idol that the Knights Templar were accused of worshiping, and then kind of got rolled into a uh, kind of pagan idolatry. Um, or a cult, kind of a cult things. It did talk about a pagan idol. Uh, there wasn't anything very definitive about it that I could personally find. So if somebody watching this knows uh, more about that, I would be thrilled to know about it. However, because of this below here, we have the one who seeds, right? I will say this, if you're hard of see sight, if you have bad eyes like me, uh, this bottom row of words can be a little bit difficult to read. Um, without your glasses. <laughs> and just the way the font is as well. The one who sows discord is what that uh, says below there. Um, so you just have that, uh, you know, I think you can get enough from there. I almost, you know what comes to mind when I see this, and this is not in, you know, this is not what this is. Uh, but it, what makes me think of is like the sin eaters uh, that used to go around and eat the sins um, of people which isn't sowing discord. Again, this is just for whatever reason this image makes me think of it. But but this is obviously a person who is going about and sowing discord and causing problems. And so, you know, you can read that um, how you may. Um, but that was that was the only word. Uh, well, these were the three words I had to look up. This one, you know, the word itself is still a little unclear even after looking it up. But these two I got to learn new words about. So I love that. Um, so that's what I have to say, I guess, about there being difficult words in here. Um, I would just say, you know, take it as an opportunity to be able to look up words, which is really exciting. And a lot of the words, you know, the, that I did know, um, you could definitely see that the, the word, you know, the, the clarification underneath it very often, you know, tells you what you need to know about that word. Um, I just want to really quick, this is going to probably be spliced in uh, poorly. I just really wanted to read a... Uh, a piece from a book called The Interpretation of Fairy Tales by Maria Louise von France. She was a, um, she worked with a Carl Jung and some people kind of just talk about her as sort of the heir to Jung, um, certainly the feminist version of Jung. Um, and she writes um, in uh, in interpretations of fairy tales, that fairy tales are the purest and simplest expression of collective unconscious psychic processes. Therefore, their value for the scientific investigation of the unconscious exceeds that of all other material. They represent the archetypes in their simplest, barest, and most concise form. In this pure form, the archetypal images afford us the best clues to the understanding of the processes going on in the collective psyche. In myths or legends or any other more elaborate mythological material, we get at the basic patterns of the human psyche through an overlay of cultural material. But in fairy tales, there is a much less specific conscious cultural material, and therefore they mirror the basic patterns of the psyche more clearly. Uh, further on she reads or she writes after working for many years in this field I have come to the conclusion that all fairy tales endeavor to describe one and the same psychic fact but a fact so complex and far-reaching and so difficult for us to realize in all its different aspects that hundreds of tales and thousands of repetitions with the musicians variations are needed until this unknown fact is delivered into consciousness and even then the theme is not exhausted this unknown fact is what young calls 
calls the self, which is the psychic totality of an individual and also, paradoxically, the regulating center of the collective unconscious. Every individual and every nation has its own modes of experiencing this psychic reality. And so then it goes on to talk about how fairy tales, various ones, um, kind of give pictures uh, of various parts of that process. Some of it's looking at the shadow. Some of it's talking, looking at the sort of the mother, uh, father, the animus and anima, you know, goes into that kind of thing. Um, some of it focuses on the unattainable treasures um, and these kinds of things. But, but mostly what it really is getting at is the idea of the self. And that is, you know, in its purest form what fairy tale is about. Um, and so this is why I have spent a lot of time reading and studying fairy tales and um, their importance. Uh, so that's why I was so excited to see this deck come out. And I just wanted to, and this is going to probably be a little bit sloppily spliced in, but I wanted to make sure that I added that in. <laughs> uh, so here we have, um, these are not in any order. They're, you know, they're alphabetical. There's no numbers. They weren't in alphabetical order when I got them and I've already shuffled them. Uh, oh, the other thing I want to say that I did do um, I wondered, because people have said, you know, there's a lot of shadow here. I know that uh, folk tales are very light and shadow, which is why I am absolutely in love with folk tales. Um, that's why I'm a fairy tale person, not because of the happily ever afters, but because there are depths and there are highs to folk and fairy tale. And uh, the depths are frightening sometimes and the highs are, you know, ridiculously happily ever after and then everything in between. And so I just have always adored that and I will always adore that. And so this deck truly is like one of those dream come true kind of decks for me. Um, but I was wondering, okay, if this is, you know, shadow and light, is it too much the other way? Like, is it all shadow and not enough light? Uh, but, so what I did is I split the cards up. Just, you know, I really wasn't paying strong. I wasn't sitting there and struggling over each card. I just made two piles of light and what I considered light and shadow. And there were some that could have, you know, depending on how you read them, obviously can go either way. But I just wanted to get a rough idea. And there were approximately 40... Uh, that I would consider were light or positive or encouraging or something along those natures. Um, and there were 35 uh, that were what I would consider uh, shadowed cards. So very, I think very even because some of those, there were about five that I ended up putting into the light category. Well, two or three. I would say it's about evenly split because there were a couple that really could go either way. Um, you know, there's one called curiosity. Well, curiosity itself could go either way. The image, though, was uh, could be pushing you closer to the dark side. So there were ones like that, that, you know, depending on how you read them, depending on the situation, could go either way. So this was just kind of a rough, rough split. So it's pretty evenly split, I think, between light and shadow, which is, you know... Please, yes, make my soul happy. <laughs> so I'm, I'm thrilled about that. Um, so here we have, please excuse if I do slaughter some words. Like a flate is, like there's words that I've seen and I know what they mean uh, from books, but I don't necessarily, haven't spoken them. I don't use it in conversation. Maybe I should. Sorry, I mean, <laughs> I'm getting fur off of my table. Okay, so here we have a flatus, which is your divine calling. And this is one of the cards uh, that is a, a sideways card. So according to the book, aka the card, <laughs> um, if this were to come up, you would cross the last card with it and it would be read upright. You wouldn't, um, you wouldn't reverse this if you did read reversals. Uh, so that's interesting. We'll try that out when we do a reading. Um, here we have futility or chasing an illusion. Is that all right? Here we have intemperance, um, lack of self-control. We have all these little goblin-y characters. Here we have stability or sure-footedness as this cat crosses this there. It's wonderful. Here we have a parasite. Um, and this says dominating influence. So this is interesting because we have this person that's climbing up the wall or 
pulling somebody up the wall, but is this person going to like untie it and make them fall? I'm not entirely sure because we have somebody uh, that's dominating um, the influence. So this card is interesting and I would probably, you know, it's probably going to be interpreted um, much depending on what cards are around it. Um, so that one's interesting. Um, I, I want to make a little pile of ones that I... I would love to get anybody's input on, I know a couple people do have this deck and how you um, actually read this particular one. Uh, but we just seem to have somebody sneaking in. It makes me think of the Bible story where they sneak um, people in, I think to Jericho in the baskets. That's not what this is. That's just what it makes me think of. <laughs> um, here we have decline. So all passions are spent. So that's, I mean, it's pretty clear, and the image is just beautifully um, clear about that as well. Disorientation or losing the way. This person is lost out in the woods. I love how beautiful is that. Anxiety, inertia, born of doubts. Compassion. A light in the dark and so we have almost like Snow White that's laying here um, and we have all of the dwarfs that are you know washing her and cleaning her and they're gonna probably put her to bed and they're caring for her so how beautiful is that here we have another sideways one or horizontal card and this is the craft it says the old ways look at that oh, these cards are stunning the beginning, which is at the end. How amazing is that? <laughs> See? It's the beginning at the end because here's two old, uh, an old couple, and they have been given a baby somehow in a, in a fairy tale. They've been given a baby. Um, they have been given a be new beginning at the end of their life. That, to me, is going to read just amazing. Here we have quackery. I love that. Professional incompetence. So we have clearly, uh, this is a sugar and spice in. Uh, we have just people that are clearly incompetent to do their job. Temptation or the beast within. So they're tempted by what this old lady is saying, but she is a beast who is going to put them in cages and that little boy is going to end up shoving her into the oven and roasting her. Because that's what happens in fairy tales. <laughs> Here we have guardianship, protection of the vulnerable. Oh, so beautiful. And then it makes you, you can even ask the question, who's protecting who? Mm. Look at this beautiful card. Fecundity. So this is creative power. Oh. Regrets. The winter of the soul. Look at this man. He's got all these little creepy little winter demons that are all around him. The trees are kind of going against him. He's in the winter of his soul. His regrets have put him in this terrible position. Position. Blah. Look at this beautiful ascension. Nurtured and nurturing. It's both. It's a, that's both. Look at. There's a fat baby there, but I love that picture. Coercion, leaving behind. See how interesting that is? There is a coercion. Is it a coercion because you say, I'm going to leave you behind if you don't, you know, don't, you better keep up or I'm going to leave you behind? Um, that's really an interesting, I, a lot of times it's the word and these together make a very interesting uh, question. It, you know, it asks questions, I think. Here we have guile. I will say that with the font, a lot of times the G looks like a C. I mean, obviously, that's not a word, so you know it's guile, but that is a prom, uh, problem. Um, and this is false promise, so there's being tricked uh, by a talking donkey or something. <laughs> I love this one. Courage. Defensive but daring. So she's defending herself, but she's also very uh, daring and ready to move forward if necessary. Uh, influence, so we have stirring up the spirit, so we have sort of a Pied Piper, but with the spirits, you know, there's often taught, you know, one of the ways that you can entrap a uh, fairy is with music. Here we have the forbidden fruit. Uh, mind your own business. <laughs> because look at, here's his nose starting, can you see that? And it's going around and around and way back there. My guess is he probably stole the fruit and lied about it, and now his nose has grown super, 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 super long. <laughs> I don't know, I love it. 
Here we have Strength, the Beast Tame. Look at her. She's just striding along comfortably with all these lions around her. How gorgeous is that? polarity, a charged atmosphere. We can see these two people that are in some way either in opposition or simply opposites and it's charging the air and you can see this, the wind is blowing, the clouds are you know, stirring up and so we've got this um, kind of cyclone of events starting to charge up. Here we have cultivation, achieving refinement, they're learning. Distraction, diversitor, right, I can't read this, diversionary tactics, so they're diverting things, um, he's kind of stopping them, it's like, almost like that they're wanting to attack these women or something, and he's kind of holding them back and distracting them, um, there's a lot that you could do with that depending again on the question. I love this picture of grace, awakening the immortal soul. Persecution, casual cruelty. We have this little girl just yanking this little girl's hair. So there's that, just that, that scent, and there is something so um, terrible about the word persecution and casual being connected to each other uh, that makes this even more powerful than it could be. Just, you know, a little girl pulling hair and, and um, you know, casual cruelty, and then you add persecution on top, and those words together just make it very impactful, I think. Here we have guidance for the, finding the hidden path. It says the hidden path, so this is going, he's showing him a path through. Here we have providence, anonymous benefactors. Uh, so here, you know, it's just a woman. She seems to be working very hard. She's barefoot. Um, and inside here we can see little gnomes, like maybe this, this you know, little seven shoemaker some gnomes or something like that, and they're coming in and they're helping her, um, even though she's not aware of who they are. Here we have gossip, words to the unwise. <laughs> Disquiet as a sudden disturbance. Look at that, that flock of birds just, just taking off. Um, that would definitely, you know, if you're on that precarious situation, that would certainly be disquieting. <laughs> machination so we have unreliable associates <laughs> do not trust this person he is up to no good reserve complete unto oneself how beautiful is that look at oh okay here we have obstruction obstreperous personage so an obstreperous person is somebody who is kind of a belligerent, difficult to, to handle kind of person. And we can see this kind of belligerent uh, little gnome over here who's obstructing their pathway. Here we have consequence, indiscretions, progeny. <laughs> so that's what, so that's could be very interesting. We have the you know the consequences to a uh, dalliance might uh, bring a uh, progeny that you weren't really aware of. <laughs> There's a lot you could do with that, but the idea of consequences, you sow what you reap. Um, intimidation, inappropriate tactics. So here we have a man and a, and, a, and a young woman, and he is intimidating her to get what he wants versus um, using, you know, correct behavior. So that's great. Here we have imprudence. Home unguarded. So here we have, you know, baby cradle. The uh, parents are probably asleep right here, but we've got two little gnomes. And I'm telling you, sometimes they may be helping you, but sometimes they may be coming to steal your baby. So don't keep your doors open. Connectedness. How beautiful is this with this sort of dryad creature and the woman embraced by the natural world. And she's like literally being embraced by the tree. I love that. Here we have intuition, connection to the subconscious, and we have all of this uh, water. And you know, you always think about water with the subconscious. And we have uh, this mermaid here, who's kind of seated on the back of a fish. It's just beautiful. Covetousness, 
This is an opportunistic impulse. Uh, so this is somebody who wants something um, and is having an impulse to, to try to get something that they covet, <laughs> which is quite, I'm assuming this old guy here is coveting this young thing. <laughs> uh, here we have precaution. Uh, never harm, nor spell, nor charm. Come our lovely lady nigh. Here we have a spider. I'm trying to see. This image, I have to say, is, is a little bit busy. And so I see trees and spiders and snakes and all kinds of bugs. Never harm, nor spell, nor charm. I don't know, but there's a lot of bugs there. I'll have to sit, and this is one I will also have to think about. And so for those of you who are working with this, what do you think about this particular uh, card? I will love to hear that. I'm putting those aside. I have two of them right now. Um, here we have Alliance, Mutual Benefit. So, you know, she's obviously coming here. Uh, there's something that she's going to have to offer him and something that he can do for her. Here we have confrontation, personal disunity. I love how it says personal. Uh, so there is that even internal confrontation, perhaps. Look at that. That's like the fool card, isn't it? Discovery, new horizons. We have the hound dogs. And he is just blissful and ready to go out there with his staff. Very fool energy. Enlightenment, fulfillment, and completion. It's beautiful. Realization, the character revealed. This makes me think of, because I know that some of these images were taken from Midsummer's Night's Dream, and so you know how uh, they get their head turned into a donkey. <laughs> but we're going to finally uh, real, reveal who is behind the mask. Fortification, arrayed in confidence. So she's kind of pulling herself together, getting her clothes on, and fortifying herself to go out and take care of what needs to be taken care of. Here we have Devilment, uh, Force for Mischief. He looks very mischievous. <laughs> Here we have Misled. This is another sideways. You know, that made me just think, no. I was say, maybe one of those was supposed to be read sideways. Here we have another sideways one. This one's quite dark. Um, this is Misled, Unreliable Guidance. So we had a guidance card, but this is a guidance card, and he probably should not. See, this is like a... a Will-O-Wisp, and you should not be following those. They are up to no good. And so this is an unreliable guidance. So we have a regular, and then we have the unreliable. Wonder, shadow of the past. So that's beautiful. We kind of see this almost like this. It's not, but it kind of gives you that idea of like the Easter Island statues. Um, this looks like maybe a pharaoh or something, sphinx or something in Egypt. Jealousy, unleashing an inner demons. We have this woman here. It looks like a woman. And we have this little person here. Or that could be a man. I'm not sure what's going on in this particular image. But there is, I don't know. He definitely, his face is definitely filled with jealousy, uh, I guess, over his um, joyous happiness. And that is going to just cause him more distress. Here's ending, our journey's over and done. So we have, you know, the end of somebody's life. Or as we can also have the end of somebody's journey coming to visit her. So there's just different ways you can read that. Retreat, a change in plan. Of course, a retreat has a, a connotation, you know, not just of changing your plan, but, you know, needing to be to, sometimes it's time to, you need to back up and regroup. Here we have adoption, new interests. Um, so this would be adopting a new interest more so than just adoption uh, like we would think of. Look at this. Resistance, a prickly situation. <laughs> a little tiny fairy in a briar patch could be in a stickly situation. Here's a complication, unexpected development. So here we have this, you know, this is part of Midsummer's Night's Dream, and we have her fall. You know, she's supposed to wake up and fall in love with Oberon, but instead she's waking up and falling in love with the guy with the donkey head. 
here we have a coterie, and this, so this is a circle of peers. So this is an instance in which, you know, pretty much what's underneath it does describe what the word means. Um, sometimes, not so much, but that one it does. Shadow, something approaches. So we have her, you know, kind of herding her geese here, but look over here, we've got a shadow approaching. Is it something good? Is it something bad? Right now we don't know. Here's Perseverance hanging on at the edge. We've talked about that in the card of the day today. Awakening. You have but slumbered here while those visions... You have but slumbered here while these visions did appear. So this is kind of the end of, of Midsummer's Night's Dream when they're all waking up and it's like, it's just been a dream. And you've kind of woke up. All that happened is just a dream. Magnetism, charming properties, how sweet and lovely is she? She is definitely charming. We have curse um, or ill aspect. And this is, of course, again in Midsummer's Night's Dream um, when oh, it's completely blanking in my head, bottom. Somebody bottom <laughs> that gets his head turned into a donkey's head. <laughs> he has been cursed with an ill aspect. This is gorgeous. Destiny. There's a change in the wind, but you get the sense it's a positive change because it's destiny. Curiosity or hidden danger. So there is curiosity here, but this is this is a little red riding hood, and this is not her grandmother. Uh, she is going to get eaten, or she's going to kill the wolf and get his fur. Uh... Here we have a catalyst, which is an agent of transformation. This is one of the sideways cards. Um, and so we have these two people that are asleep. And this is for Midsummer's Night's Dream. And this would be Puck putting uh, what needs to be put in their eyes so that they're supposed to wake up and see each other and be in love. <laughs> Here we have Renewal, the Mercurial Soul. Uh, so we have, you know, the water is very mercurial and moving, so that makes sense. And there is that sense of renewal in this beautiful lady here. I love that. Here we have Delusion, a false attraction. So look how sad he is because he knows that Titania is uh, not really in love with him. Um, she's been deluded, and so he's so sad. I'm just throwing stuff out there. I'm, I haven't sat and paid a lot of attention yet. <laughs> amalgamation, inner harmony. I love that because amalgamation is that, you know, you think of amalgamation as sort of that com combined coming together, but it's, it's coming together in inner harmony. So I think that's really wonderful. First light, dark spirits are driven away. So the, the light is coming. There's all these spooky spirits here. Um, and the light is going to start coming through and that they're going to be driven away. Here we have report. Um, so you're having that, you know, that comfortability with somebody. Um, and this is with a trusted confidant. And there we have all of the cards other than we have our two. So this is the male significator and this is the female we see her standing here with her horse um, and this is the female significator so we have both of those um, as well that you can use depending on how you're going to use if you're going to use it kind of the normandy then you would want to use those and if not uh, so let's just uh, zoom out here Oh, here are my two. So if any of you out there that have this, uh, you, what is your idea of what this image is talking about with precaution? And what it would be your idea of this parasite one? I mean, I can think of ways of reading it, but I'd be interested to hear what others might think. Or if you don't have it, if you can see this good enough uh, to give your suppositions, I would be quite um, happy to get some input on those two. Um, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, shuffle in the female significator. Of course, it just ended up on top when I split it. <laughs> there it goes. So these shuffle really well. They're a nice weight. They feel like Llewellyn needs shuffling, which I adore. Um, I will be um, blacking these sides for sure. I have seen Benabelle Wen on Instagram had put a picture up of hers black, and she had a different back. Uh, but uh, it's 
it's beautiful and this will be done more than likely tonight with my Bohemian Gothic tarot. I do a little of both, a little of this one, a little of that one, and <laughs> have very, very black hands. So what you could do is treat this like a Lenormand deck, or almost like, you know, Chronicles of Destiny in a way, which has the Significator cards as well. And so what I would do then is maybe uh, turn it around and search for the uh, female card. And of course, you really needed to you know, give this a better shuffle than that, but I'm just kind of showing you how you might want to use this. Of course, there's a lot more cards in here than there are in a Lenormand deck. Where are you? Of course, it's going to be at the very end and not work very well. Did I? I obviously. Ugh, look it. Okay, well, we're just going to pull five then because we can't do a nine card. Uh, so we pulled the two before and the two after this. And so here we have our significator. Let's see. Okay, let's zoom these in. Okay. Well, you can see those, okay. And so in uh, we have here, over here, influence and coercion. So that's quite interesting because we have the influence stirring up the spirits. But if we're using these, and it does even talk about in the guide card, uh, to read these Lenormandy in a sense that you should kind of be reading these in pairings. And so we have an influence, but it's a coercive influence. It's not a good influence. We also have this leaving behind that can pop out. I would really tend to use some of these words just as part of the images and what's going to pop out. So we have an influence here that is coercive uh, that we might need to leave behind um, that's going on. And so then when we look over here maybe to get some more ideas, we have a moving towards a circle of peers and a discovery of dream time. So she's in this sort of liminal space. If I was reading this for this person, I would say you're kind of in a liminal time. This is that time where you're sleeping, but uh, you need to move away from influences that are co 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 <laughs> that are coercive. You need to move away from that, leave that behind, and you need to focus on uh, the people around you that are your peers, the people around you that you trust, um, and also understand that you're in this transitional period. Um, and so then I would probably, let me move these up a little bit, um, I would probably say, okay, well, that's interesting, but I want to pull a little bit more about what is she moving. We can clearly see what she's moving away from, right? Um, we can definitely see um, that she needs to move towards a circle of her peers. Now, peers doesn't always mean like-minded, but they're people in your grouping. Uh, but uh, moving away from people in your group that are co 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 oh. Can I not say coercive? <laughs> Leaving behind people that are coercive, that are, you know, having a negative influence, who are making you do something that you are not really willing to do, but you feel like somebody that's always having to say yes to something they really don't want to, but somebody's making them feel like they have to. Uh, there's that sense of that. Um, but we're moving away, but we're in this period of transition with this doorway to dream time. She needs to really go inward. You can think of dream time almost along the same lines as the subconscious water sometimes. You, know, you can get in there to get at what is at the heart of the matter. But, you know, just because we're doing this, we might want to pull an extra card or so to see what's going on. Like, what are we going to learn from this dream time? What are we going to learn from this period of reflection, maybe? And so I'm going to pull two cards out so that we can see. And we have persecution, um, which seems like is what they're going away from. And uh, we have persecution that's coming up underneath of the peers. So again, we have a sense, sense that this person is not in a good situation whatsoever. Um, but look at how we have the temptation here uh, underneath the doorway to the dream time right? Um, and But this is also really within, the beast within. So that's the idea of these children make a choice to go in. Um, and so you have to, and yeah, I would say here with this, they're definitely not in a really good situation. Um, 
with the people that they've surrounded them. And some of that is choice because temptation is about choice. You might be tempted by something, but the actually acting on it, uh, there is definitely a um, choice that's being made there. And so the choice needs to be to leave this behind. This kind of situation that's going on needs to be left behind. And so let's pull a couple cards um, going forward just to see if we can see um, a little bit more. See, moving towards the divine um, calling and an agent of transmutation. So there's that sense there's a catalyst that she, and this one actually, technically, see, but we just laid this, um, is supposed to cross the last one. So we have uh, temptation. This would end up crossing, if we went by that rule, this would end up um, laying across the temptation. Uh, so instead of Instead of going and giving into your uh, temptation to stick with the situation that's no good, um, it's time to move towards your calling. Uh, it's supposed to move towards your destiny here. Instead of going in and giving into temptation to go backwards, move towards your calling. Um, and then we actually have another cattle, another of these important cards that would go over the last card, which would be the divine calling, which tells us again, it's time for transformation, transmutation. It's time to change the people that you surround yourself with to better people. <laughs> <laughs> so there we have uh, just a quick example of a wing and a prayer kind of reading. I think these are going to read absolutely beautifully. Um, I'm so, so, so excited uh, to uh, work with these cards. And obviously, hopefully I didn't just put those in wrong. Um, obviously, I will keep you up to date on how um, these end up reading, but I'm really excited about them. Um, okay, I'm back. I just want to show you that I did go ahead and blacken the edges. How gorgeous is that? Now, I have had a little bit of difficulty, and I saved three cards so I could show you. This was the first time that I've done black on the edges, but that the face side was, you know, fairly light color. This is more like a linen color. And then obviously we have this dark edge around the outside. Uh, but I definitely wanted to go with black because of all the ink work here and this in the backing. So the, I was sure I wanted to do back. Well, I had two problems. One, my ink pad I think is about done with black. I've done uh, quite a few decks with the black ink. And the inside of it, you know, from rubbing thin cards has gotten eaten up. And so there are uh, like threads coming up. And so I think that that caused it to come onto the front sides a little bit more than normal. I'm also generally fairly messy with doing this uh, because I usually have black and black and it really doesn't matter too much. So I think it was a combination of me being messy and the way that the fibers on my ink pad were because even after I was trying to be careful I was still getting ink coming up and then um, even after it was dried I this dried all night last night and then this morning it was still wet on the front facing and any ink that was on the back because of the gloss and the type of the cardstock um, but the good thing is is that because of this let me zoom in a little bit here because of this, it actually, I saved three and obviously, or four, these aren't, girl, well, here, this is a good example. If you look closely here along the bottom, you can see all this ink that has kind of transferred to the top. I actually don't mind that in this deck because it's a very old ink line drawing look and it doesn't look bad. However, it's not drying, so then it keeps transferring. But if you take a paper towel, you can literally just wipe that right off. And if you keep, you know, in circular motions doing it, it literally completely goes away to where you can't see it at all. Um, and then I've been flipping it over and doing the other side because that's, I, th I think I was transferring, I had ink on the back uh, and it was transferring then onto the front again and again and again. And so it was, this was definitely my most labor intensive uh, edging of, it's well worth the effort because um, they look amazing, number one. Number two, um, 
you know, I've just gotten to spend more and more time with these cards. <laughs> so it's been worth it, but it, it was starting to get frustrating because I was like, oh, I kind of cleaned it up the best I could being kind of gentle. And then I realized this morning, just get in there, wipe it down really good, get this off the back and be done with it. And it does, it all comes off. So I will say that and other than the side, because the side is obviously raw paper and so it stays on there, um, which is where we want it. Um, but I have to say this is pretty mistake proof because this is the next day. I did these last night and this is afternoon of the next day and I'm still able to wipe the ink off of, and you have to press pretty good. Um, and if it's kind of stained, you do need to give it some circular motions just to really get it out of the linen uh, aspect, but it comes completely off. So it's pretty mistake proof. You're not gonna hurt anything. You might have extra work to do to get it you know, looking clean again, but it does come off. Um, and again, I actually kind of like the bleed over look with this deck because it is so line ink drawing. Uh, but the problem, but the problem is, is that it wasn't drying, so it kept transferring. So that's why I ended up really um, wiping it all off. And then again, yet again, because um, I'm just gonna kind of give it a wipe because it wasn't it wasn't drying and so that's more my problem not that there was some bleed off because I actually kind of wish that some of the bleed off look would like here's one I didn't do real good but I just want to show you how see how it looks even smeared like there's no way you're going to get that off you just rub a little bit it's just it really is just elbow grease because it comes off um, and looks fantastic. So I find this found this to be frustrating uh, But it would actually be a good one to do if this is your first time around because it's very um, Easily even after a day later, it's quite easy to clean it up uh, But you'll see that the sides here's my wrist, which is very pale. You'll see that the sides are not transferring any ink whatsoever. And this is how this ink is. When it is when it is dried and it's on a raw edge, it, it doesn't transfer. Um, but, you know, when it's on this kind of gloss to where um, it's not able to dry, that's where you're gonna get transfer. And then I'm just, you know, gonna keep a, I sh this sh should be pretty good because I've now gone through fronts and the backs of all of them. But it looks amazing, look at that. Um, I absolutely love it and it was well worth the work because this is stunning. Um, now I'm going to, I put up on Instagram and Facebook, I want to play around with these and my Bohemian Gothic, which I now can't <laughs> ink and I'm going to get another ink pad before I ink that one. Uh, but I'm going to play around with those a little bit with some questions on a video so you can look out for that. So this has been a look at the Rackham Oracle um, by Duck Soup Productions and I am massively in love with this deck.